I'm Christy Wilcox, and if I could pick any issue in marine conservation to be talked about more, it would probably be marine invasive species. I think they're really important, and I think a lot of people don't understand what's going on or how to prevent them from happening. Hi, I'm uh, Nick Malice. I'm a conservation biologist with Ocean Conservancy, um, and I specifically focus on the impacts of plastics in the ocean ecosystem and on our beaches. Uh, looking at the next two or three years in terms of what I, I view as a, a major priority and what we need to address in the ocean ecosystem, and it's, it really is the issue of plastics and other forms of debris. Um, and you know, we need to understand the, better the large scale ecological impacts of those plastics in the ecosystem. Um, but really, what we need to do today, tomorrow, and moving forward is changing our consumer behaviors on land and reevaluating the way that we, as consumers, as individuals, can really control and thwart the additional contributions of, of synthetic debris into the ecosystem. I'm Karen James. I am here at my fifth Science Online conference. And the issue in ocean science and conservation that I am most concerned about this for this year and I would like to see brought back up over and over and over again to the surface of our discussions are coral reefs. It's easy to forget as each year progresses that this remains an important issue. And the, the statistics I've heard, and I, I'm not going to get this exactly right, but you know that, that a third of our coral reefs are pretty much gone, and in another 50 years, reefs as we know them will be gone, is not only tragic in terms of the beauty and the diversity that will be lost, but it also in terms of the human livelihoods that coral reefs provide and the medicines and all the potential, you know, um, cancer medicines and other kinds of, of important things for, for us going forward. So I think that we need to keep pounding on this issue and bringing it up even though it's it's easy as the years go by to choose whatever issue is sort of the most important but coral reefs are going to stay on top for me. in Jonathan Eisen's lab at UC Davis and I think the issues that we need to think about over the upcoming year uh, in terms of marine science are definitely biodiversity so accelerating the pace in which we discover marine biodiversity specifically in habitats like the deep sea um, and also dealing with the crunch of genomic data so improving tools to actually pick out species and, and re recognize biodiversity um, in large sequencing data sets so it's almost a bioinformatic challenge for marine science. I'm Chuck Bangley. I blog at uh, You Like Dags, uh, talking about fisheries issues and how they interact with sharks and other apex predators. Um, I guess coming up in the future, like I'd like to see people deal with kind of the connectivity of species in the ocean. Previously, a lot of conservation is kind of focused on one species or like one group of species. Um, but I think, it's particularly in fisheries management and conservation in general, we're seeing that if you put all your effort into saving the striped bass, you spite the herring if you don't have something out there for the herring, because the stripers need the herring to eat. Um, so you could have the greatest striped bass management in the world, but if they've got no herring or menhaden, they're screwed. Um, so you need to really, I, I, and science and math and everything is finally getting to the point where you can really get at that. And I think that needs to be a big push, is just seeing how everything fits and how everything's going to react if you knock out something else. My name is Miriam Goldstein. I'm a graduate student at Scripps Institution of Oceanography, and I blog for Deep Sea News. The issue in ocean science that I'd like to see discussed more this year is why it is so hard to get ocean science into politics. There's a lot of issues in ocean science that we know a lot about, we know what the problems are, and it's really time that we need to see some positive changes talked about at higher levels. I'm an associate professor at UNC Chapel Hill. I'm a marine ecologist and a blogger at Sea Monster. Um, I'd really like to see us and the broader media um, start talking about a solutions, and I think a lot of these solutions um, are they require sacrifice. So I think the three big ones um, are ride your bike, don't eat any seafood, and stop consuming plastics. From my perspective, overfishing climate change and plastics pollution are easily, you know, three of the top five or so threats to marine ecosystems in general. There's certainly other things. Um, so I'd really like to see us start really addressing those things head on. I'd also like to see us start talking about really what works. So evaluating conservation policies 
you know, as a scientist, as a real, you know, from a real skeptical perspective, and starting to think about what works and what doesn't work. You know, we've all been talking about Sea Shepherd. You know, just ramming Japanese whaling ships. Does it work? Does it reduce whaling? And you know, the evidence looks like it doesn't. So let's talk about what might work. I feel the same way about marine protected areas. You know, do they work? What do they work for? What don't they work for? Um, and a lot of those things start to touch on, you know, practically. Well, really cherished paradigms. You know, in marine conservation and marine ecology, we have these things that we, we like to promote um, to managers and to society and to NGOs, and we often don't really you know, think about them amongst ourselves in terms of what really works and what doesn't work. So I'd really like to see us kind of tackle those two issues, solutions and a critical evaluation of, of what actually works and solving some of these problems. Seafood labeling is another one. We're going to do um, kind of a, a forum at Sea Monster in the near future on seafood labeling. And a lot of people are starting to ask the question, is this a good thing? I mean, I used to think it was fantastic. These seafood cards, you pull them out of your wallet, you look at it, figure out what fish you can eat with you know, minimal impact. And the whole problem of mislabeling seafood is really starting to get people to think, was well, that a seafood, are the seafood cards helping or, or harming? Are they just giving, essentially letting people assuage their guilt and eat seafood when they really don't know what the heck they're eating? You know, what good does it do to have a card that tells you what to eat if you don't know what fish you're really eating in the first place? And, you know, those are difficult issues and I think we should start tackling them.